Hi, I'm James Sykes, CEO and Director of Baseload Energy Corp. We had an amazing 2022. We drilled over 22,000 meters and we advanced our Accio uranium discovery with, with some really exciting highlights, including high-grade mineralization that starts at around 25 meters beneath the surface. Discoveries like this haven't been made in 40 years within the Athabasca Basin area. So we're excited to continue our exploration programs next year. James. Good to see you. Likewise, Marlon. I'm glad. Uh, good to see you in person. We've done yeah, some, exactly. a, a few calls um, over the, the 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 Zoom, as they say. Um, exciting year for for base load 2022. Except I bought some shares and I'm down. What's going to go on? You know, I'm a shareholder now. Yep. And um, I'm down. So let's let's put that in context. Let's not make it all about me. But let's talk about the 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 year for uranium stocks before we get into base load. So kind of just in macro, has you know what's the what's the shape been looking like? <sighs> shape is down. Yeah. Uh, macro, yeah, everything's down. It's not just the uranium space, but the whole investing market, uh, commodities market is definitely down. Even though the price of uranium has been performing very well, so the spot price and, and the contract prices look like they've been on on the upward trend. So they're currently around fifty dollars per pound, forty nine fifty. Yeah. Yeah, currently right around, yep. Yeah. And the contracts, have you got any feel for where the contracts have been, the longer term contracts are being signed? Uh, around fifth, all I know are, uh, well, actually, some of the older contracts that are still in place are around that 50 to $55. Yeah. Uh, but in, in August, I saw Dennis and Mines report that they sold, uh, I think it was about 40,000 pounds of uranium at $75 a pound. Okay. So we can we can imagine that, that that contract price is somewhere between 50 to 75. So, Fundamentally, the uranium space looks better and better. Yes. The, the base load Accio deposit looks better and better. Absolutely. We've got this macro risk off. All prices have come down um, in the resources sector, uh, well, by and large. Um, and I think the last time we spoke, you said you were going to be, you were considering at the board level, not spending on exploration drill meters because the market wasn't going to reward uh, exploration holds. Correct. And that's exactly what we did. In August, we decided to pull the plug on the, the diamond drill program. We had, by then, we had completed 22,000 meters. So it was, it was more than we had originally anticipated, which was 10,000 meters. We were happy with all the results. We were happy with what we had defined. But every time that we would put out news, there was just no, no market reaction. So we would continue to put out some of our best results, uh, great drill hole intercepts, shallow mineralization, and there was no no positive market feedback. No, no, not even a kind of a sugar hit. Not even a little, little, a little bit here and there. It would last for a day, and then it was gone tomorrow type yeah. of situation. So it, we just figured that we were we were putting a lot of funds into losing market cap, and it just it didn't make sense. Especially is so in Canada, we've got two different uh, financial type of, uh, of funds that we can use. We have flow through dollars, which yeah. have to be spent on drilling. You can't use that for GNA. And then you've got your hard dollar side, which is all, that's what you want to retain for your GNA. And that's how you keep your business afloat. We were out of flow through. So if we were going okay. to burn our, our hard dollars, well, then we're, we're losing the, the capacity to continue running the company in, in future years. So we wanted to preserve as much as possible uh, those funds. And you talked about um, not going ahead with the diamond drill program. Does that mean, was that a, a new diamond drill program or was the previous um, drilling all RC? No, uh, no, well, it was it was it was all diamond drilling. Yeah. We we don't we don't do RC drilling, but we just we didn't go ahead with it because oh, the next for, phase. Yeah, it was basically we got to a point that we were happy at. We needed to digest the information as well yeah. and really really hone in on on where were the better areas. So it, it just made sense. Everything all happened at basically the same time, and we you know I think we did the absolute right move, and I'm so happy that we did it. Stop drilling in late August. Yep. Mid uh, early August, actually. Early August, yeah. um, and the acid results came through. I mean, because it, you, you can do CPS counts first of all, but yep. then you get the fire, then, then the assays, the full assays later. Yep. And we ha we were releasing assay results throughout August all the way to November. Okay, and um, just just uh, I don't I don't do too much on on the geology, but just can remind me what you've kind of um, your consolidated thinking now of what you're looking at. We've defined mineralization over a 375 meter strike and 175 meters width. We have multiple zones of mineralization with variable depths, anywhere from 25 meters beneath the surface down to about 300. 
uh, the structure, the, the controlling structure that we've defined there has, has changed a little bit. And we think we've got a, a, a much more appreciable structure, uh, a structural model that really fits with the mineralization. So that will be a focus moving forward as well, that if we can start proving that model, then we think we're going to be hitting, hitting more mineralization. And th that is, is more subvertical kind of tabular um, features. And yet you've got this quite a large, almost blanket, it's kind of connecting lower, it's presumably lower grade at surface, isn't yeah. it? The material that's near surface seems is our higher grade material. We have a number of different high grade pods yeah. that are all mantled within a lower grade envelope. But even that lower grade envelope looks quite encouraging. So the whole thing, um, the whole deposit still has room to grow. And when you say lower grade, what do you, if you put a drill hole through the lower grade envelope, what might you get in terms of percent or ppm yeah roughly anywhere from 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 okay so uh or sorry percent yes so percent. Five, 500 100. to 2000 ppm okay, gotcha yes gotcha thank you yep. yeah great and then and it across a high grade zone high grade uh, zone uh, exceeds 5000 ppm okay so and quite o quite yeah. often over 10000 ppm yeah 10000 ppm being 1% yes yeah great good um so next year you know, what are you looking for in terms of catalysts to uh, uh, change the market? Are you seeing, sorry, the, the, the question I want to ask is um, who's selling at these levels? And, and what, can, what do you see, can you get any discernible pattern from the buying and the selling at the moment in, in, your own, uh, in, in base load? Because you're down at 4, 52, 53 cents. Yeah, there's no discernible pattern, but which the, the selling that we've seen in the last, in the basically the last month, all correlates with the, the financings that we have announced. So prior, in October, we were floating around 65, 70 cents, and we thought that was our bottom. We announced the financing on October 31st, and it was a, a charity flow through. Now, charity flow through is a little bit different than, than regular flow through in that it's got a couple of additional parts. And what it allows you to do though, or allows the company like Baseload is to, um, is to have, sh have shares out in the market at higher price levels, or, or we can issue shares at, at a higher price level. So in Saskatchewan, we're getting 60% premium on the spot on, on, on our share price at that time. So that's quite a bit. So we were, we were at around 60 cents and we were able to to, to launch the, the financing with a share price of about 98 cents. So there's that 60% there's that gain, which allows us to, to, to preserve on dilution. Uh, we're, you, know, you don't have as many shares at, or you're not selling as many shares at, at these higher prices. The trick though for, for, for charity flow through is that there's a backend purchaser and that backend purchaser gets the shares at a lower price at, at basically market prices. Yeah. So because we had done that, because we did the charity flow through and the back end price was at around 60 cents, uh, paper holders, current paper holders were selling their shares to bring, to bring the price down to that back end purchase price so that they could, that they could get back in or additional exposure to, to baseload. Okay, and, and so really what you've seen to take it down below that is just kind of um, overshooting. Overshooting, yep. Uh, market reaction again, just terrible market times. We just announced yesterday as well that we had a 3 million bot deal placement. So that was, you know, and because our share price was lower when we announced that one, that the back end purchases was also lower. So that's what dropped the share price down even further. So it's, it's, it's not that, it's not, really a negative perception on baseload. It's just, it's, it's people just, trying to get more exposure through a deal in which would give them warrants as well. So, so that's what they want. Is there a one for warrant on this, on this three million bought deal? The, the warrants? Yeah. No, half a warrant. Half, half a warrant. warrant. Okay. Yes. But that, and, and so that's, you know, it looks negative, but in the, the grand scheme of things, it, it's a good thing because we know these are the guys who want the shares and the money's there for us. And is that $3 million mostly out of North America? Yes. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's all out of Canada. Uh, Canada is the only place I can do charity the, flow through. The, the charity flow through. Uh, and what's been the reception here in the um, couple of days that you've been speaking to UK institutions, UK money? Is is, is all of the the charity flow through? Is, is it just a bit too much, or are people actually interested in the the fundamental story of the of the asset? The charity flow through is too much for a lot of people to <laughs> to take in. There's no doubt. It. I've wrapped my head around that so many times, but I think I've got it now. Uh, so that, that really hasn't perturbed anybody. They really like the story. Uh, everyone I've talked to have all come away, they, this is a great story. And they know the macro scape that uranium and nuclear power is on the up and up. So they yeah, very positive uh, reception here in, in London. Remind me of your market capitalization. Market cap, we've got about 86 million shares outstanding. Market cap's at around that 45 million. Okay. So plenty of room to grow if, if this if this um, makes it as a commercial discovery. So do you have, in, I always think of a commercial discovery as being kind of, uh, on a reasonable asset being 50 million pounds of contained uranium. Is that, is, is, is that too, too rough a yardstick? I think that is a misconception by most people. And I was originally exposed to an idea like that too when I was, when I was first into uranium. And I'll use, I'll use Athabasca as an example. But one of the things that, that I had originally come across was that you need 200 million pounds to do an underground mine. Mm. You need 50 million pounds to do an open pit mine. However, when I, when I look at the history and even some of the more recent open pit mines uh, being the Sioux deposits, which are early 2000s, they're not 50 million pounds. Mm. So where does that number come from? If you want to build a mill, okay. you need those pounds. Okay. So if you need to build a mill, you need at least 50 million pounds. Which, if you want an open pit, and that that again tracks very nicely with the history of mining in the Athabasca. Okay, is that all of these all of these areas that built mills had over fifty million pounds, and what built the mills were the open pits. So we we don't think that we need uh, if if we can get a toll milling agreement with the with the mills in Saskatchewan that saves that's a huge cost saving right there, yeah. and that's why we don't think that we need. You, know, you don't need that 50 million pound magic number. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that, um, so a lot will depend on whether you can uh, establish those tolling arrangements. Conversations. There's, oh, there's a lot. We, we depend on a lot of things. We're still early <laughs> stage. It's only been one year of, of hardcore drilling. So we've got a long way to go. Yes. A long way to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the 3 million uh, that you're raising now, um, would that will... Uh, do what in 2023? What are your plans with that money in 2023? We're going to drill catharsis. I'm excited for that. Okay, so, so away from Accio. Away from Accio. Now, uh, we'll take this opportunity to explain that. Sim it's, it's a logistics decision. It's a, we have nothing bad to say about Accio. We love Accio, and I think Accio is going to be developed. I honestly think that Accio will be Athabasca's next, next mine. So we'll push hard for that. But... You have to remember in Canada, and especially in the wintertime, you know, much like here in England, we don't have a lot of daylight hours, which affects helicopter operation because we are, we're helicopter supported at Accio. It's also cold, much colder than here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walk around like this and I'm fine. I'm happy here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's much colder. So as it's colder, you need to warm the drills, you need to warm the camp, and that's done through fuel. So that means you're slinging more fuel with a helicopter so he's got to make more trips and yeah. if you don't have as much daylight hours and he's got to do more work well then then it's yeah. a terrible situation to get into yeah so catharsis is perfect for us because the road up to the key lake mill runs right through the project our camp is going to be right off the road our target areas are one to five kilometers off that road everything on catharsis that we wanted to do this winter is all road accessible okay so we're going after a project with a, a, a lower cost per meter to start off the winter than going to Accio, which would be more than what we would spend if we did Accio in the summertime. And uh, the aim is to make a discovery at absolutely. Catharsis. Oh, absolutely. Two out of two, you'd be pretty pleased with that. I would be very pleased with that, <laughs> yes. We've, we've had a lot of good success. I think we've been very successful with our drill programs already. We, uh, it would, Accio was discovered on the first drill program. We also discovered the Be Beckett Lake pegmatites, which not a lot of people know about, but those were a series of radioactive pegmatites at Beckett Lake. It's, it's quite a voluminous area. 
And on our last hole last year, we took an off uranium approach and looked for looked at a VTEM conductor that, that we saw in the geophysics, and we discovered sulfide mineralization. So we've we've been pretty successful on, on every drill program and every target area that we've gone to. So I, I don't see any reason for anything otherwise than at catharsis. And what are the vectors? What are these? What are your kind of your, your stacked GIS uh, anomalies look like at the catharsis? Beautiful, gorgeous. They all line up perfectly. That's where there are target areas. Um, it's magnetics, EM, and gravity, and uh, uh, structural yeah. uh, kind of. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 yeah. Basement. They, they all look like they're there. We have no catharsis is an interesting area in that. Theoretically, there's no sandstone, but looking at some of the topography out there, there's a good chance that there could be sandstone underneath some of the, um, in some of the little valleys out there. Yeah. And that represents a very interesting scenario in that we could have unconform potential for unconformity mineralization, which would be shallower than a basement hosted. Yeah. And there wouldn't be a lot of sandstone out there. It, we're not talking like Athabasca. It'd be a thin little skiff. Remnants. Yeah. But, and typically those unconformity deposits are higher grades yeah. and, and just more concentrated uranium. So th there's that potential. But yes, the, the basement hosted mineralization, we're still bullish on that. We think these targets look like it. One of the targets, uh, my favorite one, it, it almost looks identical to what we targeted to discover Arrow. We've got... Okay. We've got a nice mag trend coming through. You've got two conductors on that that overlap, and you've got a gravity low right in the middle. That was arrow. And when are you going to get um, a core through that so and you can run a scintillometer over it? Hopefully in January. Oh, really? That yep. soon? So that th soon. these are relatively shallow targets? Very shallow. We're drilling about 200, 250 meters depth. Good. Yep. Well, very nice to see you. Thank you for coming over to London, especially for this interview. Yeah, that's all I came <laughs> for. <laughs> oh, it's been great. Thanks for having me. Um, and uh, well done on the technical success over 2022. Um, it's been a brutal year in the stock market. Um, hopefully 2023, there's, there's some recovery. I wonder, do you see any, um, any macro indicators that you'd, you'd look for? Is it just kind of more contracts, more Price indicators. Is, is, is there anything in particular that you're looking out for? Or is it just steady as she goes? It's almost steady as she goes. I'm not really looking out for the macros because I know it's going to be there. Yeah, the the contracts are. There are more contracts coming out. I do believe that the the prices are going higher, especially if you want to incentivize a lot of a lot of mining. Which, in the uranium side of things, we need to see higher prices to incentivize mining. So I I, I can expect. The, the, sh the spot price and the contract prices to move up in 2023. And then you look at all the build outs that are happening. It just seems like countries are building out faster now. China seems like you know they were building out quick, but now they're on the, building on out the nuclear power. on the nuclear power. Yeah. Uh, Saudi Arabia, you've got Sizewell C happening in your own backyard here. That looks like it's, it's getting a lot of love and attention. You've got more countries in Europe who are, who are starting to go nuclear. Uh, the States made a, a bullish claim few months ago that they want to really ramp up their nuclear fleets. Canada's looking at SMRs, even even my home province, uh, Saskatchewan, we're looking at SMRs. Yeah. So it's the demand is growing and that's the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, good luck with 2023. Uh, look Thank forward you. to seeing what um, catharsis brings. Maybe it'll be a cathartic moment in there. Maybe and it the, will. the stock can uh, re-rate. <laughs> I think so. You know, regardless, we're not we're not worried about anything in 2023. We think it's going to be a fantastic year. We've got amazing targets. We've got Accio that's going to just it's going to grow. Uh, we've got some some zones that need some more drilling in that we think that will will yield better results than what we've seen so far. We've got new targets we want to hit on the hook project. It is a very busy year, a lot of catalysts, and that's why I'm not worried about where we are right now, because I think we've got nowhere to go but up. Great. Well, on that note, um, let's leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Merlin.